In September of 2023, We Are The Seats held our fourth annual Seats Philly event at Cherry Street Pier in Philadelphia. Moderator Xiaowei Star sat down with Tyler Nagoya, Avery Amaya, and Colleen Farwell to discuss their new indigenous arts online marketplace, Project Analog. Enjoy. Welcome to From Here with a View, a We Are the Seeds Philadelphia podcast. And welcome to our conversation, Preservation and Innovation, a New Economy for Indigenous Arts. We are going to be talking about the future of the indigenous arts business from the perspective of the founders of Project Antelope, a curated online marketplace that connects indigenous artists to the global economy. I'm Xiao Wei, and I'm moderating our conversation today. I'm joined by Project Antelope founders, Tylin Agoyo, Avery Amaya, and Colleen Farwell. Tylin has worked in public relations, marketing, and design for over 20 years. She directed PR, marketing, and programming at Swaya Indian Market in Santa Fe, co-founded the Santa Fe Indigenous Fine Arts Market, and produced East, an indigenous art show in Connecticut in partnership with the Pequot Museum and Northeast Indigenous Arts Alliance. She founded and is the director of We Are the Seeds of Culture Trust, a Philadelphia-based nonprofit committed to amplifying indigenous voices through the arts. Avery is the VP of Growth and Strategy for Retail at Gen Zion, a global delivery provider that powers digital transformation with some of the top retail brands in the world. He has extensive experience in digital commerce as a Chief Revenue Officer, VP of Sales, and Regional VP of Retail Growth. He also volunteers with several Philadelphia area community groups in education and lacrosse. And Colleen, Colleen founded and is the CEO of Black Canyon Distribution, a company that provides services to and is licensed by indigenous communities throughout the West and Midwest. Through Black Canyon, she has connected indigenous manufacturers with indigenous retailers, helping small businesses grow and thrive in markets typically designed to snuff out indigenous expansion. She's also the author of the children's book, I Will Carry You, and splits her time between New York and Arizona. Welcome, thank you for being here. I'd love to start with hearing a little bit about what is Project Antelope, Avery. Can you yeah. kick us off? Yeah, I'd be happy to, uh, to walk us through that. At its simplest, it's an online digital marketplace, uh, indigenous owned and operated with an emphasis on enabling, supporting, and uh, showcasing indigenous artists in the United States, Canada, and, and in the long term globally. That's awesome. Can you, can you share a bit more about the global aspirations? We knew we had to start at the beginning, right? But thinking globally in the long term, there are indigenous people all over the world and um, often they are not centered in the conversation and um, especially I've been in indigenous arts for most of my life and, and working um, with and around indigenous artists from North America. Um, it's really interesting to me when I'm able to um, meet other indigenous artists from other parts of the world and have these collaborations and conversations. And the more you have those conversations, the more you realize just how connected we all are as indigenous people, our experiences, a lot of our songs and our music and dances are tied together in some interesting way. And the idea of um, making Antelope available for artists as a platform globally just expands the idea of the marketplace that we were talking about that we that we see here a lot in the united states but we really want to make sure that you know there is such phenomenal beautiful art being made all over the world and there are indigenous communities that are honestly trying so hard to hold on to their cultures and their traditions and battling what we battle as indigenous people in North America, that it's the same struggle. And so an art is what defines our communities in so many ways. And so to be able to have that all in one place um, is really, I think, something special and is something that we really aspire to. I'd love to hear about how y'all got started with the idea, how you decided to come together and come up with this new business venture? I'll start. Um, 
I am going to speak just for myself for a moment. Um, I was Christmas shopping, and I love to support Indigenous artists. And we have the most beautiful work. And I would get on Instagram, and I would find the most gorgeous little moccasins for my grandbaby, and they say sold. And there was nothing um, really available in real time. You had to be up at all hours of the night and catch it when it was first presented or it was gone. And for me, um, you know, I was looking to expand my own business and had a couple proposals and was just thinking about what do I really want to do from here. And Ty Lin, who was just an amazing connection, um, I started to think about what can we do together. And I think that frustration at Christmas, it bloomed in my mind that we should start um, an online marketplace where everything is in real time and where we can support indigenous artists. As a businesswoman, um, I had another indigenous businesswoman. She was Mohawk. She owns an incredibly successful company and she gave me the most incredible opportunity. And I thought, how do I give that back? Like now's the time to make, to not just make a transition in my life, but to be able to lift people up the way that I was lifted up. And Ty Lin has done that brilliantly um, for years. And it just made sense. And so I reached out to her and little did I know that she and Avery had had this conversation maybe, was it a year before? Yeah, about about a year before, and it just all sort of came together. So I guess that was, that was my starting point, and it was just, you know, a carry-on of all of the work that Thailand has been doing and just bringing our experiences together to really um, focus on the marketplace, focus on Project Antelope, and find a way to make all of these connections in real time. So it's really exciting. A lot of the same experiences and motivations. Yeah, I always, I'm very particular with where I spend my money. Not that I spend that much money, but when I do, I really like to be particular about who I'm purchasing from. And, and like Colleen and Thailand, was going through that same experience and realizing that there were some folks that were just killing it online, had really built incredible brands, uh, were, were really expressing themselves in a meaningful way and telling these beautiful stories and selling amazing product, right? A lot of it wasn't accessible. That was a big challenge. But my other thought was, man, for every one of these people that are killing it, there's got to be another 50, 100,000 people that really would love maybe just an easier tool, more access, maybe somebody who could, again, not, not necessarily take it, but just help kind of enable that, uh, that, that presentation, that growth. And so for me, having spent basically my entire career in and around digital commerce, retail, it was always like, man, it would be so great to take, you know, what I've learned from some of these other, you know, global, amazing brands that I've worked with and focus it on, on something really specific. And I think a big part of it too, and ties into uh, what both Thailin and Colleen said, was the idea of really doing it as a marketplace as, as opposed to a straight e-commerce site. The idea was we wanted to give the artists as much control, as much voice as they could, could possibly have. And so by making it a marketplace and making it as easy to use, um, and, and again, again, just as accessible as possible, that was really our vision. Like, let's just create the market, a lot like what we're looking at today here, and just give people the space give them the platform and let them let them do their own thing. So then once, you know, as Colleen noted, Thailand and I had been kind of talking about this, like, man, wouldn't it just be great if we just had, the, you know, the, the right formula together? And it was then kind of serendipitous. Where it was like, hey, let's all jump on a call. And it was like, this is perfect. We have to do this. So um, since then, it's just been a, a labor of love and it's been really exciting. And you know, we've had some bumps in the road like, like any business does, like anybody learning this, but it's, uh, we're at a really exciting stage and really looking forward to the future. It's, it's quite special to have all indigenous founded company focusing on indigenous art, preserving it, moving it forward, giving it more awareness, dis distribution opportunities. Was that an important thing for you guys to be indigenous run, indigenous founded, focusing on an indigenous business? Or did it kind of just happen that way? Because you guys have these different professional strengths that work? I would say a combination. Part of it was it came together, like all the pieces fell into place. I mean, really, Thailand is the, the, the linchpin for all of this, thank goodness. Um, 
But even when we talk about how to structure the organization, something that we were um, surprised and very flattered by was as we started to really kick this around, once we decided it was something we were gonna do and we each shared it with our, our respective networks, there were a number of people who were very quickly like, can we invest? We wanna be a part of this, we really love this vision. And again, while we were flattered and certainly have a lot of respect for those, those people that reached out, we did make a commitment like, hey, let's preserve this, let's make sure that for at least some period of time, we can really be true to this idea that, that we have the control and that it is indigenous owned and, and operated. So that was, again, somewhat coincidental, but when we really were at a time to make a decision, it was very deliberate. So, Tylin, you've worked very closely in the indigenous art space for a long time. And as you guys have mentioned already, there are existing channels by which artists can sell their work. Why? did you decide to make something new? What are the gaps in the existing markets and sales channels that you're addressing here with Project Antelope? Because I've been working in the indigenous arts field in many capacities for over the decades, um, I've seen a shift happening, but for a long time, indigenous folks, particularly indigenous artists, didn't have agency um, it was, a lot of times it was non-indigenous people determining like what had value, who the collectors wanted to see, what the collectors wanted to see, who the donors wanted to see. And like with the organization I run here in Philadelphia, We Are the Seeds, um, similarly with Antelope, uh, it, it was the same type of mission. It's the same idea that indigenous artists should speak for themselves, should have control over their businesses and over their work. And we're just kind of act as a connector. Um, prov find opportunities, provide opportunities for partnership, for collaboration, for you know business opportunities to sell their work, to showcase who they are, to talk about their experiences as contemporary indigenous people today. Um, so looping back, Yes, it's important that all three of us are indigenous people because we have, though indigenous people experiences are vast and each one of us come from extraordinarily different backgrounds, um, there are things that tie us together and things that are really important as business leaders to bring to work every day. And that is a consideration of the artists that we work with and it is an honoring and um, a respect for where we come from and who has come before us and who will come after us. Maybe Avery or Colleen, could you share a little bit about what artists can expect from the experience in Project Antelope? Like, similar to what Tylin was saying, how this, this is an honoring, this is a different experience than, you know, maybe coming to a market that is uh, where artists maybe don't feel full agency, or Colleen, you were mentioning social media where artists can put their stuff up and then as a customer, uh, you know, you got to catch it before it's gone. What are some of the unique um, features or experiences artists can expect to have on Project Antelope? I think one of the most important experiences is um, that this is a space that recognizes indigenous people for who they are. So you'll go into a lot of spaces where everyone wants to talk about someone's sad, sad story, or they want to sort of do this poverty porn with indigenous people. And indigenous people uh, have been thriving for, for, for forever. And, um, you know, we are focused on the joy that our culture brings. Um, and the incredible amount of creativity that we have. And we want to give everyone space and lift them up. And then speaking just as a mother of six, I, in my life, need to find ways to maximize my time and my space. And Project Antelope gives indigenous people the space to live their lives and to make a good, solid income because they're not packing up all of their stuff and traveling a thousand miles and trying to make a marketplace or a show or... We are a space where you can sit at home and all of the things that happen and transpire in a day, you can sit at your kitchen table 
and showcase your art on Project Antelope. And it almost becomes a space for passive income where you don't have to be doing that trip or doing that work every day in the way that we traditionally think about work. And so that's one of the things that I really appreciate about Project Antelope is that we are a space to lift Indigenous people and to give them the opportunity to really grow their business and grow their wealth without having to sort of be at the mercy of, you know, am I, am I going to be able to do this market? Am I able to pack the kids? Am I able to pack the car? Am I able to, you know, am I going to have enough customers? And this is something that is going to instantly connect them to millions and millions and millions of people. And so that is really, um, I think, one of the best things about Project Antelope. I'd like to add that it's super easy to use, and that and that goes to what Colleen is saying that it you can get one of your items up online within minutes, and so um, that just alleviates so many boundaries. And also, what you talked about, um, it's expensive to run around the country doing shows. There are booth fees, and and those shows have value. But this is an opportunity to do it in a different way and to reach different audiences that we um, haven't traditionally reached. Avery, maybe you can share a little bit about what does the artist's experience look like in Project Antelope? So they now have heard of Project Antelope. They would like their stuff to be featured on the platform. What do they do? Yeah, I'll echo what Tylin said there. When we were from the the earliest kind of days where we were planning out how the site would work and you know what the top top level requirements were in terms of the user experience for the artists in particular and i also want to come back to the customers because that's a big part too um, but the number one commitment we made was that this just needs to be easy it has to be incredibly simple we, we can't have roadblocks in place and in fact that drove a lot of our technology decision making we, we tried some experiments and ultimately just say, no, this has to be something that anyone, anywhere, without having a computer science degree, can jump in and do this and, and make it really easy. So that's a big part of it. And really, in terms of the steps, it's incredibly simple. You go to the site, you, you uh, go sign up, and it's basic information that's required. You upload images, you set your own pricing, you write the descriptions. Um, we have uh, contact information on there. We're very happy to help artists who maybe maybe you're looking to do something special want to try something different or who just need any assistance we're very very hands-on with our artists we want to make sure that we're showcasing them appropriately and that we're making this easy so it is a an utterly simple process and, and luckily to your point that there are other marketplaces out there there are other options we wanted to make sure that we were doing something that was familiar to people that worked very similarly so luckily we were able to make that all come together i think the other thing one of the other things that that makes this different from, for example, Facebook Marketplace is a great, it's a wonderful tool, uh, really valuable for a lot of people. I think the difference there is that it, you know, while it's a mechanically sound thing and it gives you access to a local market, what Facebook Marketplace is never going to do for anyone is really ensure, uh, I'll come back to the authenticity, but the, the other side is amplification. So that's really what our job is, is to say, you know, our artists are going to submit their work, they're going to bring their creativity, their ideas. Uh, what our job is, is to make sure that we have the reach. So it's on us to do the marketing. It's on us to make sure that we've got the footprint. It's on, on us to make sure that everything's accessible. So as long as we do a good job of, of handling the marketplace on that side, then, then hopefully we're, we're supporting the, the artists and amplifying their voices. That, that's our commitment. I think going back to the customer, the, the customer experience is also really important here. And thinking back to that experience where that we all talked about where you know not getting access, um, not being able to, to get the product, the other side of that is sometimes you get to a site or you're on an Etsy or you're on a Facebook marketplace, like you stumbled on, and maybe you're looking for something really specific. Maybe you're looking for a ribbon skirt or, or wampum, right? It's really difficult to tell, is this really indigenous made? Is this something just being made in a factory somewhere? And it always made me reluctant to make purchases, which was a bummer because maybe it was an indigenous artist that, that I didn't go ahead and make that, that decision to buy. So that's something else we're really looking to, right, is not only to build that trust with the artist, 
but also customers. So that for people who are looking to say, hey, I want to make sure that when I'm coming here, I'm getting a curated experience, I'm getting a very authentic and genuine experience. So that we're really looking to build a lot of trust with this marketplace as well. So the marketplace is actually curated by you guys and your team, right? It's not, not any person can just post their products online. So it's curated, um, vetted, so customers can come and trust that everything on the platform is indigenous made. Um, can you, Tylin or Colleen, talk about what kinds of artists you have on the site and who you're looking for in terms of um, new artists to onboard to the platform? Um, the artists that we have on the site are many and varied. Um, we have, for instance, Gordell Wright, who works in Wampum, which is just, his work is just stunning. We have Shauna Thomas, who does the Mohawk No Face dolls. So, you know, we have everything from earrings uh, to clothing. We have uh, Chin's amazing jewelry. Thailand, do you want to expand? Summer Peters. Oh, I'm wearing Summer Peters, Summer yes. Peters earrings today, and I feel like magic. <laughs> I am telling you. <laughs> and these earrings are on the website. Um, yes, it's ever expanding. Every day, new artists are joining, and Xiaowei is correct. It is curated by uh, our project Antelope team. Uh, the process is an artist can go on and there is a, a form to fill out and our team will contact the artist and we'll go through a series of steps before the artist can um, upload some images. And once the artist is signed on, we work very closely with them if that's what they prefer. If they don't prefer that, that's fine too. But we work with uh, writer Jennifer Levin, who I've worked with for probably a decade now, um, who's an incredible writer, and she's working with us to make sure all of the bios and all of the language is, is consistent and beautiful. And so we're really elevating the experience and also on, on the artist side and on the consumer side. As a startup and a new business venture, and um, you guys have been together for how long now? Like two-ish years Ish. building this, Ish. concepting Ish. it? Ish. Almost Might be three. almost three. Yeah. Um, curious to hear a little bit about what kind of culture you guys have set up amongst yourselves. Like what kind of values are the foundation of your business? Because I think that that definitely shows outwardly to both the artists and the customers, right? The culture that you guys have amongst yourselves. So I'd love to hear a little bit about, about that. It's interesting. Um, it has been about three years from concept and, and, and light conversations to, to really where we are today. And it's certainly evolved. But I would say that there have been really two foundational elements that have been a part of that evolution but, but have stayed, um, and that is really trust and respect. So I think the, the mutual trust across this team, the, the trust that we have in, our, uh, in, in some of our other colleagues and folks that we work with, certainly with the artists. So I think that that trust and respect is the foundation for everything. Um, you know, we're, we all have other commitments. Colleen's uh, running a really successful business. Thailand is doing an amazing job with We Are The Seeds. I, I certainly work full time uh, and, and have a family and do other things. So there's, there's also had to be a lot of flexibility, but I think when we trust each other and again, respect each other's decisions and, and each other's voices, it's really enabled us to, to move forward and be pretty efficient uh, with, with the time that we do have together. I'd also like to add that Taekwon Wright has joined our team on the product management side. And she's in London, so she couldn't be here with us today, unfortunately. Um, but that she's been an incredible addition to our team. She came on board uh, earlier this year. And I agree with Avery. It is, it is trust and respect. And um, because we're all so busy, we all have families and jobs, other businesses and things that we're working on, it's really important for all of us to be on the same page and understand when someone says, hey, I'm at full capacity, I'm at 150% right now, how are you, can you pick up where I can't be? And we all kind of like, it's like this little, would it, Tetris game, would that be appropriate? Ballet. Where we kind of like 
fit ourselves where we need to be. Um, and then we win, right? <laughs> it's like so fun. <laughs> no, but it is. It's cool because sometimes I'm just like, you know, I'm just completely, I can't even, I can't do it. I'm overloaded. And then Avery will be like, all right, what you need? And then all those things are handled. And then Colleen will come in and then, or I'll do that. And Taekwon will do that. And we all just move ourselves. And I think that's a function of one being very entrepreneurial. I think we all are that way. But it also is a function of having families and managing households. And, and that's just a skill that you learn. You, you, you don't stop. <laughs> you can't stop. You understand what the goal, the big picture is and the goal. And then the fact that we can communicate our needs to each other is really key. And, and not often, I think, I think it's a special thing. I don't think it's something that you often find um, with business partners. It, you have to have a level of emotional maturity and because it, it's not just professionalism it's it's about being just able to understand what our what our limitations are and where where we excel in any given day and understand that and be gracious with each other about it yeah and i think also um you know, along the lines of, of the teamwork and the respect and really making space for each other, we're really doing what we love. And that sort of alters your life. When you can get up in the morning and, you know, you have five tasks ahead of you, but they're making a difference in the world, it, that, that adds a layer of something that's just really indescribable. And so when people are like, oh, do what you love, it doesn't feel like a job. I think that we're... Um, lucky enough to really have uh, that experience. And that really helps to just get up and do what you love and to watch Project Antelope grow every day. And we add artists and we add product and it's just becoming more and more beautiful. And it was such a big deal when we had our first sale. And now they're just like, they're happening. And, and going back to your question about how important is it that you're an indigenous company, I think that has been um, so important to our dynamic because we all come from the same place and the same space and we have those shared values and the shared uh, visions for the future and thoughts about where we come from and our children and our grandchildren and the people that came before us and bringing all of that with us all the time. So yeah, teamwork is the dream work. Teamwork is the dream work. I just want to add one thing about how we're all really, we're fanboys and fangirls. We love artists and that, that really ties us together because you can talk to Avery, he can talk to you for like three hours about his favorite designers online and he has like collections of t-shirts that are in bags from native designers that he has not touched. And Colleen, every, okay, this is the challenge. Every time we're on the Project Antelope site, we all want to buy the stuff that's on there. <laughs> and we had a meeting the other day where we were like, listen, you, you can't. <laughs> and we asked Taekwon, we're like, come on Taekwon, can we just like, I just want those earrings. And she's like, yeah, no. You gotta leave them on the site for other people. Right, so that's one of the things that really ties us together is that we just soak it up. Every time we talk to an artist and they put something up or they, they, we talk about a collaboration or something coming up, we just get giddy. It's because you don't share that with everybody. When, when we launched the first version of the site, I was so excited. I went on and wanted to not just be the first person to buy something, but I really wanted them. And I placed the order and Taekwon right away was like, yeah, I deleted your order. <laughs> Yeah, we, 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 yeah. we are big fans. That's a really good point. It, it makes it fun. <laughs> you guys have spoken a bit about the joy of this passion project and this business and working together. And obviously, starting a business comes with many, many challenges and hardships. But um, I would love to hear maybe from each of you, like, a moment of joy around Project Antelope. Honestly, today is a really special day. This is the first day that we've ever had a physical presence somewhere. So we've got at this wonderful uh, market here at Cherry Street Pier, we have our own space set up and we're getting to see a lot of the product uh, here. We've got folks working with us. So this feels, uh, today is a very special moment for me, uh, especially on the SEC. So it's, it's a nice day. 
Okay, I, you stole my answer. <laughs> um, you know, we are working from different locations. Um, I'm in upstate New York, um, Arizona part-time. Uh, Ty Lynn and Avery are in Philly. Ty Kwan is in London. And so today, all of us being together, um, knowing this panel was happening, seeing everything set up, um, making our first sale of Gordell Wright earrings, it just really is, it's happening, and it's happening in real time. And today feels really, really incredibly special. And to be teaming up with We Are The Seeds um, and to be here in this space uh, is just so uplifting and phenomenal. And, and it's been really just kind of a build up, honestly. I mean, just, was it last week, week before we signed up a new artist? Nicole Hatfield, she's so incredible and she's so motivated and she's, Instagramming and she's doing all of these things and just to watch um, our artist ambassador program that we just started um, and to see her come into that space and really flourish and start making so many immediate sales and so kind of on the heels of that first ambassadorship to come here and be here it, it just feels like all of the momentum is going our way and that's just really exciting. I'll talk about something that's more behind the scenes um, Colleen and Avery and I have been working together for over two years and we've been working with our legal team and, you know, um, and our developers and everything on the technology side. Um, and it, it's been going really well. well. We made the decision to bring Taekwon on board and once she just sunk her teeth into everything and she looked around and she, she got an idea of what we were doing, what we were looking for, it seemed like everything really clicked in. And I just remember there was one meeting that we had, maybe it wasn't the first, it might have been the 10th, but there was a feeling during the meeting, it just, everything kind of solidified, everything came together and I hung up and I was in the best mood that day. It felt like another step forward. And business and life is a series of steps, right? And some days it's like a plateaus and some days you get a real big jump and then it goes down and you know, it's a process and, and that's how things go. Everything's a cycle. But there was that one moment where I just felt like, oh my gosh, we're on our way. And I know that we're going to have hundreds and thousands of these moments, um, but that was something that was very special for me. Thank you for sharing. Um, what can us as customers and artists and fans and supporters look forward to on Project Antelope? You guys are now live, right? Projectantelope.com. There are artists online. People are coming to buy. What can we look forward to in the months and maybe years ahead? <laughs> you know, the future for me is how we are going to handle collaborations. And, you know, Ty Lin has so many incredible connections in the art world. And, um, you know, just for me, being an, also an author and having written a book, um, Ty Lin brought me into a space with the American Indian Community House. They did a collaboration with the MoMA um, in New York. So we went to the Museum of Modern Art, we presented, and out of that collaboration, the MoMA has now picked up I Will Carry You, and they carry it in the museum shop. And that was a profound moment in my life. I'm not gonna get emotional. <laughs> um, but you know, when I think about that moment, um, I didn't get to share that moment with my mom. So that's why I'm emotional. Um, but when that happened, I just realized, because now we had Project Antelope rolling in the right direction, right? And we were getting people signed on. And the way that we can connect them through collaborations uh, with bigger houses, right? With bigger spaces. I mean that in the sense of just sort of taking their work, right? And, and adding it to other spaces where they have more opportunity with less work. And that's really exciting. Yeah, I, I'd add to that. I think that was beautiful. Thank you. And I'm, 
And it's okay if you get emotional. That's exciting. That's a, that is a profound moment. That, that's amazing. And congratulations. Um, I think in terms of where we're going with the site, I would, this is where I think digital commerce is uh, in many ways more interesting and, and more fun than, than traditional retail brick and mortar because it's so easy to change, right? So I think where we're at now, this is a term that these two probably got tired of hearing about at one point, but this, and this happens a lot when you're, when you're launching a digital presence, right? You, you talk about a minimal, uh, minimum viable product, right? What is this a pure foundation? What do we need to do to get live? And, and what, what can we not sacrifice on? We've certainly accomplished that. So I think now I love, you know, the comment on collaborations, working with artists in more creative ways, um, having them contribute to help shape who we are. Uh, and I think just really evolving the experience, right? And getting feedback from both customers uh, and artists alike. Like, are we doing the things that matter? Is the experience right? Does search work correctly? Are we telling the stories correctly? Is the site navigable? Um, but then I think you, you know, again, just also expanding the footprint. So bringing in artists from more areas and, and bringing in new mediums. So I think it's going to be really exciting. We're, we're really looking forward to holiday this year, and we would encourage anyone who listens to this, think about us when you're thinking about uh, holiday shopping this year. So, um, I think that's really it, just the evolution. And now that we've got that foundation, what can we build? And it's so flexible and in a lot of ways easy easy to, to change. So I, I want to just add to something Avery said, because if I never hear the words minimal, what was it minimal? minimal viable, viable product again, I am going to celebrate. But, but I do want to expand on that because we heard a lot of talk as the creators of Project Antelope about minimum viable product. And... We got there and we were not happy uh, in our first iteration. And the three of us just said no. And it felt so good to say no to people that were supposed to be experts, to walk away, to let Taekwon start us all over again. And now we have a site that is ease of use where our artists can just come in. And so our vision in this is also so important because we're not going to let minimum viable products rule our lives. We are gonna make sure that things are done right. And I just so appreciate Tylan and Avery because they were brave enough and bold enough and strong enough to say we're gonna start over. And we did that. And so as technology changes, things are just gonna get better. Like I already feel so good about the space that we're in, about where our artists are, and we're gonna be able to create better opportunities. I also want to add better, bigger, better, more opportunities, but also like really cool stuff. We're going to be doing some really cool collaborations and this team has a lot of vision. And like Avery said, technology is changing every day and we're on top of it and we work really hard. We work really hard on this site. We work really hard in our lives. We're really dedicated to seeing things through. Um, so you have a roadmap but you also stay open to all the possibilities because we can't predict the future, but we can be open to what positive things are coming at us. And so it's really exciting to just take these steps every day. The last question for us to wrap up. When you think about Project Antelope, can you give one word or one sentence that exemplifies Project Antelope for you? I'm only laughing because I don't think any one of us up here one sentence have, kind of people. You have to pick a word. It doesn't have to be the word, but a word, a feeling. For me, it's inspiring. Um, it's one of those, I'm going to say inspiring. I'm going to give a little bit of color on it. I say inspiring just because it's, it is that perfect thing. It's like everybody that's involved gets to win if it goes right. Our customers can win. We can win as, as the, the, the business owners. Uh, our artists can win. And I feel like it's not always in business that everybody involved get, you know, can succeed and that it, it's all positive. So not only the people that I work with, because that's a, a huge part of this, uh, but, but really the nature of what we do is, is inspiring. So You should go first because I'm going to steal yours. Uh, my one word would be community. 
Okay, this is, this is Thailand's, but it just sums it up so beautifully. And um, every time she talks about Project Antelope, she says indigenous brilliance. And it's indigenous brilliance. Thank you guys so much for sharing space with all of us and um, your passion and commitment and excitement for this project is really shining through and we're all really excited to see how it transforms and grows over the next months and years. So thank you so much and thank you for tuning into From Here With The View. Uh, we are the Seeds Philadelphia podcast. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Xiaowei. Ihe N Thailand Nagoya, Avery Amaya, Colleen Farwell, and moderator Xiaowei Star. And to you for joining us for this episode of From Here With A View, a We Are The Seeds Philadelphia podcast. You can find out more information on Project Antelope by visiting projectantelope.com. From Here With A View, a We Are The Seeds Philadelphia podcast is produced by Michelle St. John with music by Zachary Julian and original logo art by Jason Misong. This podcast is funded in part by Independence Public Media Foundation. For more information, please visit wearetheseeds.org.